Ooh, what's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarice. And we got another episode of Boba Fett, so we have to talk about it. Because we get Nerdy Nightly. And we thought we'd share it with you. That is right. Clarice was doing weird things. Don't, don't like... Pull my hairs out. Um, this is the spoiler chat for episode four uh -huh. of Boba Fett. I think it's called The Gathering Storm based on a Ming-Na Wen tweet, but it also might not be. I, they don't put the titles on Disney Plus for some reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 and so yeah. I don't know what it's called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think Boba Fett has ever tried Boba Tea? No, but I think he should. I think he should. <clears throat> I think I think that should be a video. Yeah. On like... Yeah. Somewhere on YouTube, somebody somebody get Boba Fett some Boba Tea. Did you see that? Did, I watched it. But I don't know if you watched it. Where someone made Simu Lu a like hundred and fifty dollar yeah. Boba Tea. We watched that. Together. That video was awesome. Right. I want to hang out with him so much. He seems so cool. Spe Anyways, speaking of people I want to hang out with, Tamara yes. Morrison is back as the titular Boba Fett, mm -hmm. coming in after last week's controversial episode. Yep. The uh, conversation Very. sparked by it went in every direction. Yeah. Yeah. And it's they're important conversations to have. One hundred percent. And mm. that they're being had by people smarter than us. <laughs> well, and we had it last week. I mean, sure, the, the, yeah. The, the off-screen killing of the Tuscan Raiders last week sparked a lot of uh, debate and controversy. I think it was a bad choice. Yeah, and and rightfully so. Yeah. And I think that one of the only real I have like two complaints about this episode. Mm -hmm. I like this episode a lot more than last week's episode. Um, and I think that visually it was a lot better looking than last week's episode. Um, particularly in the, 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 um, hangar scene, I thought like visually looked really strong. Mm -hmm. Um, the visual of, um, Boba Fett's starship, which I don't think has a name anymore, uh, cause I got rid of its old one for good reason. Uh, mm -hmm. the, that ship flying, flying around that hangar looked like a really solid visual to me. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I think like production wise, I think this episode was a lot better. Uh, but it, one of my complaints is that it very much. Any, any hope we had that there was going to be some redemption on the Tuscan killing storyline? No, it very typically, we yeah. just got the scene where Boba says, they were killed because of me, <laughs> and now I'm going to go create my own tribe because I got that one killed. And it's like, okay, yeah. Um, the yeah. one thing I do appreciate about the episode is uh, in the conversation at the campfire, uh, Fennec Shand is like, yo, you're gone soft. And he's like, no, I'm, they, the, the Tuscans that make me soft, they made me strong. And I was like, all right. Yeah. At least he learned the right lesson from... Yeah, I, uh, I... There was, like, a little... There was a small part of me that was, like, maybe they're going to do something really, really interesting with this and blow everybody away. <clears throat> you know, I was like, maybe they're going to turn it around. They got something up their sleeve. It's Disney mm -hmm. and it's Star Wars. You know, they wouldn't... It seems silly for them to fall into this very obvious trap. Um, and they did. Um... Uh, this episode was fine. I, yeah, you didn't like it as much. I didn't love it. I thought it was fine. Um, I think I think the Boba Fett is still struggling with the flashbacks. Yeah, this show really struggles under the weight of the flashbacks. They don't like they don't really connect. It's just mm -hmm. like we re we know that you really want to see the story of how he survived yeah, the yeah. pit, but we really want to tell this story. Yeah. So I guess we'll give you both. But the problem is that the past storyline is more interesting. And, like, that's always a killer for a show, right? If the mm -hmm. flashbacks are more interesting than the present, mm -hmm. you have a problem because eventually you run out of flashbacks and you have to care about the story in the present. Yeah. And I think that they've done the present a disservice by structuring the flashbacks in the way that they have. I agree. I think that season one should have been the fan service. The This is how Boba Fett survived. That should have been season one. And then season two, they can get into their new stories and new things. I don't even think you need to do that. I just think that you need to structure the show differently. I think that part of the problem with Boba Fett right now is that they have structured the flashback sequences to be built around him being in the Bakta tank. Yeah. And so the flashbacks can only happen when he's in the Bakta tank. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, the flashbacks have to be these giant chunks of the episode in this episode let, let's talk, let's just go through the plot really quickly and then we'll talk about it sure. the plot of this episode is that boba is sleeping in his bakta tank again mm -hmm. and so we get to go back to the night that the uh the night that the tuscan 
the Tuscans of the Dune Sea were massacred. Mm -hmm. He is sitting by a fire and he sees a flare go off and it's Fennec Shand. Mm -hmm. This is wild to me because like how long was he with the Tuscans? becomes a really weird question. Well, and that's what I asked you. I was like, so is all this going on at the same time that, like, Luke Skywalker is defeating the Emperor? Uh, what we are led to believe is that the Mandalorian takes place five years after uh, Return of the Jedi. Yes. So it was Boba Fett with the Tuscans for five years? Because he wasn't in the Sarlacc pit for five for years. No, no, no. There's no way, like, he wouldn't, like, he would be dead. So... Are, are, is the implication of this episode that, like, I thought we were going to get a time jump to the Fennec Shan stuff. Yeah. I thought a couple of years would pass, Bobo. But, like, it, this really, this, this draws into question, like, when is this? When is the Mandalorian? How <laughs> long is Bobo? And, and I, I feel like they didn't set, they didn't give us any answers to that. They were just no. like, eh, these things all happen. They're like, don't worry about it. And I'm like, uh... <clears throat> But if Boba Fett was with those Tuskins for five years... It is. He should be way more devastated that they're dead. Yeah. I thought I thought he was with them for like a month six and a half. Six months, maybe. Maybe six max. months. Yeah. 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 It, it's just it was an interesting choice, and I don't I don't understand it. Uh, but he picks Fennec Shand up off the sand, takes her to the modder, which is I appreciate the mods in last week's episode. Now, now that we've met the modder, I like that they're creating a culture because because thematically the story that they're telling is that you have these kids who mm -hmm. and I, I didn't really think about this last week right but these kids drash and her crew mm -hmm. they were raised under the empire and that's what they've known their whole life and they're just now well i mean five years ago i'm so confused about, i feel like yeah. mandalorian has to be closer to return of the jedi than we previously thought yeah drash and her crew are were kids who were raised in the empire yeah and are finally allowed to have a little bit of freedom they've been living under tyranny and they're going a little buck wild instead of getting tattoos <laughs> yeah they're getting yeah. mods yeah, yeah, yeah and like i actually the, seeing the way that this was going down i was like oh i, I really appreciate drash and her, their, her crew now a lot more yeah i don't think they were handled super well mm -hmm. i think it's still super weird that Boba Fett hires them and they suddenly are willing to like risk their lives. Yeah. Right? Like the I, with the Gamorrean guards, it feels different because they were literally prisoners that he could like anyone else would have just killed. And Gamorreans are like notoriously loyal. Yeah. No, that pop made, punks on the street aren't notoriously loyal. No. Like that made complete sense to me. And then literally like Boba Fett picks up these people off of the street and they're suddenly willing to like Step in front of Black Kersantin Yeah. For this guy, like I'm sorry, but I don't I, want to relitigate last week though. No, no, no. It, but but I really wish, like I I I wish that they had been handled better because because this part of it because it ties back into that, and I I want to like it more than I do, but I'm just annoyed that it wasn't done well. That's fair, and I I, I agree with you, right? Like I, I think know, that yeah. Boba Fett, I, I think they should have given Boba Fett or, or given those. The crew more of a reason to be on Boba Fett's side. Yeah. But they did what they did, and we just, I like, it's, we just kind of have to move on from it, right? Yep. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so we meet the modder. Boba Fett apparently is loaded. I didn't yeah. know Boba Fett was so rich, but apparently Boba Fett is rich. And he just pulls well, some money out of his, his out of his uh, breast pocket. He's been with the Tuscans for, we're supposed to believe, five years. Where did he get this money from? Don't know. Uh, and he pays for Fennec Shan to be saved, and... So she, like, wakes up in the... I actually really like the sequence. I will say. The mod yeah. sequence. Oh, yeah, yeah, His mod arm with, like, the different things. It is so Cyberpunk 2077 that it's hilarious. Yeah. But his mod arm is... It was very cool. Actually, this would have... They would have been making this when Cyberpunk was coming out. When Cyberpunk the game came out. Mm -hmm. It is weird how much the modder... I was like, oh, this is Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. um, just because of his... Like, he has his real hand and his tool hand. Yeah. Um, but they, they, he saves Fennec. They go to the, the campfire back where he picked her up. Yeah. <laughs> it looked visually like he was like, you were shot here. Yeah. I, yeah. It's a choice. And, and uh, she wakes up and she's like, what do you want from me? And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to like collect the bounty on you. I just, could you help me out? Yeah. Yeah. I need, a, I need you to help me take out, uh, take out some guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Which like, I'm like, yeah, yeah, that checks out, you know. And she's on board. She's like, uh, yeah, okay. All right. And I appreciate this. I love the way that they set up the bounty hunters in the Star Wars universe as being people of honor. 
And but Fennec Shand in this moment doesn't need to stay. Like, she could just leave, right? Mm-hmm. But she's going, you know what? He saved my life. I owe you. Yeah. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. So they go back to Jabba's palace where uh, uh, <laughs> Boba Fett's ship, it's hard not to call it Slave One. I know. It's, yeah, they need to give they it another like name. A, they need to give it, like, a dope name. They need Yeah, they just need to give it something so that we can yeah. move past it. Boba Fett's starship is not working for mm-hmm. me. S1. S1. Um... So they're going because Boba Fett wants his ship back because he wants to take out those the the raiders mm-hmm. that previously we saw him single handedly defeat in a bar, but apparently now he he can't do that anymore. He's he needs to ship. Of them now, yeah. Um, <laughs> so he they're looking at Jabba's palace and he's like, oh, there's like six people, not too many. Too many. We'll have to sneak in." <laughs> no, there was like there was we saw at least like twelve little dots. I'm just saying. I feel like Boba. <laughs> Under a different it's... showrunner, Boba Fett and Fennec Shan would they would have set up a fortress because Boba Fett they never made it look like a threat that I was like Boba Fett and Fennec Shan can't take that. I mean, he does not have his armor, and he actually is still hurt. That is true. I right? think I think that next week we're because in this episode, for those of you who don't know, when he gets out of the, those of you who don't know, this is a spoiler chat. You've seen this, yeah. When he gets out of the Bakta tank, the droid is like, "Your healing is complete." Congratulations, you're 100% better. I think we're going to see a physical difference in the way he moves next week <laughs> mm-hmm. because the heel, he's he's 100% now. Yeah. And I think that part of the reason why we haven't had full Boba Fett yet is because Boba Fett has been dealing with acid burns on his skin this whole time. Well, and desert burns from the sand. like. Yeah, I, I think that... I don't know what that would be, but... I think that he's been sunburn. recuperating. Yeah. And now he's recuperated... And I, I hope, I really, really, really hope, for the sake of the show, that he goes ham in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Because in this episode, they do sneak in. Uh, Fennec Shan has a dope little droid. Yeah, uh, very cool. Which is something that I think that we, like, have in real life. And so I got very scared watching. I was like, oh, yeah, you can just, like, the, I think the army has drones like that. Probably. Like. Yeah, probably. Um, And they they sneak in, and the <laughs> they, they, they have a fight. In the kitchen with uh, General Grievous's cousin, the way, is what I've seen him called. Oh, with the chef. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Fennec Shan has this dope little blade that just like cuts heads off. Yeah. Of droids. It's great. Very oh my cool. god. Very cool. But then they kind of go for uh, they go for the comedy of Boba Fett is like chasing a little droid around the kitchen, and <laughs> yeah, it goes on. It just it went on like. A beat too long. Yeah. He, I just, if he just caught him like one joke spin sooner, I think it would have worked for me. Yeah. Because the but here's the thing: the humor of that scene is is the the conclusion of it. To be honest, mm-hmm. sure, him chasing around the tiny droid is is funny and silly. But when the de- dro- when the droid nopes out and turns itself off, when when Boba Fett like, says for the seventeenth time this episode, I, I am, am Boba, Boba Fett. Fett. Yeah. The droid is like, nope, and turns himself off. That's the funny bit, right? And it was, and, and it was a great joke. Oh, it was great. It was just that the, the chaser on the kitchen, like, just hung much. on one beat. And yes, I was like, okay. I, I think that there are going to be people who be like, oh my god, they made Boba Fett chase a droid around the kitchen. They emasculated him, blah, 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 whatever. I don't care about that. Shut up. <laughs> I, I think it's funny to have Boba Fett chase a droid around the kitchen. Yeah. I think if they had just nipped it in the bud a little bit sooner, the joke would have landed a little stronger. Yeah, it's not funny enough to warrant the amount of time that you gave it. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, so uh, whatever. Although I, I, I got a cackle out of it. Like, I, I got a good cackle out of that droid noping out. And it's yeah. the, it, this is the and second the time. the time that droids have been, like, absolutely not. Tamora like, Morrison walks into a room and droids either jump out the window or turn themselves off, and I think it's hilarious. It is hilarious. It's so... It's there's good droid humor in this show. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, and then yeah, and then we get into a bit of a fight scene because they make it to the hangar, they get to the ship. Yeah, and well, the reason why the reason why the chase around the kitchen works for me with the droid is that they're not trying to kill the droid; they're trying to not have the alarm go off. Yeah, and so they're trying to not have the alarm go off, but then the alarm goes off. But it's not directly attached to any of their actions. Mm-hmm. And I found that to be a little bit confusing. I wish yeah. that, because we get to the cockpit of the ship later, and ming ones like, well, or Fennec Shan, but that's the actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fennec Shan is like, next time we're sticking to the plan. And I couldn't figure out at what point they Didn't deviated from the plan. from the plan? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like maybe there was something that got cut from this episode, because that that part was really strange to me. 
Like it just didn't seem like they never told us what the plan was, and it yeah. never felt like like it's not like never felt like the plan went wrong. It's not like there was a moment where Boba F- or Fennec Shand was like, "We have to. This is the plan," and Boba Fett's like, "I have to go do this one thing." Yeah. Like it, there was never that kind of beat, uh-huh. and so when she said like, "Next time we stick the plan," it it, it rang so hollow to me because I was, I was like, like, "What wait, plan? What? Yeah. Like, what? Ha- like yeah, it was weird choice." The only plan you said was be stealthy. And then, yeah. a, as far as I can tell, you were. Mm-hmm. Someone just found the droids dead. Yeah, like, that's not... Maybe like, hide the droids next time? I, I, like, I don't know. It, yeah, it was super odd. But they do get the ship, and then Boba Fett goes and, and massacres the bikers. And the action scene is dope. The 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 getting the ship action, that hangar scene mm-hmm. was great. The mm-hmm. fight with the Gamorreans, both uh, Fennec and Boba Fett kicked some Gamorrean ass. It looked mm-hmm. great. Boba Fett trying to fly the ship inside the hangar was very funny to me. That's not mine, that's yours. Oh my god, I thought this was my phone. No. And so it didn't light up, and so... No. That's mine, sorry. <laughs> um, I... So the hangar scene, like, the fight scene goes great, mm-hmm. right? And it's so cool, and then they're trying to lift the ship out, and Fennec Shand is literally, like, fighting people on the hangar of the ship, and Boba Fett's like, I can't, the gate's down. Yeah. And I was like, what, did you not have a plan for this? What was the plan? That you didn't dev- that you deviated from. What part of the plan? And then Fennec Shand is yeah. like, "Oh, I got it," and like shoots the the counterweight and the gate opens. Yeah, which is fine. But <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Your plan was terrible." <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was no there was no plan. Fennec Shand should have sat down in the co- in, in the cockpit and gone. Next time we should have a plan. Yeah, and that yeah. that line would have landed better considering their actions previously. Yeah, because their plan was be sneaky, and that's not a plan. Like. That was their whole. That was the only thing they said. Yeah, because they didn't even they didn't like plan ahead how they were gonna get the ship out, and yeah. it's like that should be like that. How how like you're it, professionals. It, it, this it this whole sequence would have been so much more interesting, right? Mm-hmm. If she sends in her droid thing, it comes back. You have the scan of the hall of the of the of Jabba's palace, right? Mm-hmm. And you're looking at it, and you're like. Oh, we can enter through the kitchen. There's no one in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. So they enter through the kitchen and there's droids. They kill the droids. And then Boba turns to Fennec Shan and is like, I like, has some line about what what happened to the droids in the scan. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, my droid was, is, it, it tracks human life forms. And like show that Fennec Shan has like a blind spot where droids are concerned or something like that. And yeah. then you could have turned the action sequence into like character development. Yeah. As opposed to this we we have to be stealthy and then just things happen yeah i i felt like it was the action was better shot than last episode but it made less sense than last episodes did yeah and that and that this the, boba fett is like a melange of things and some of them are so good yeah like the fighting was so good the way the gamorians move I'm shocked at how well the Gamorreans move in fight sequences. Yeah, yeah. They look fantastic. Yeah. Um, the Weequa and the Nictos, like, there's so much cool stuff going on. Mm-hmm. The way the sh- the way the uh, Boba's starship was moving in the hangar, the way it was fantastic. Oh, the collision, the cl- crumbling of like the walls. Yeah. Like, yeah. The CGI was so good in this episode, where it was not good last episode. Yeah. And I'm just like, the, I, I I want. Them to get to a point where, like, all things are firing on all cylinders instead of being like, oh, there's these this highs one, and these lows. And then this one, yeah. 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 So then go to the next thing. The yeah, d- Boba Fett literally just massacres this biker gang in 30 seconds or less. Oh, it's um, beautiful. It's so it's good. It's great. Like, I... I <laughs> And part of you kind of feels bad, like they don't stand a chance. But also, you know, they they're they're the bad guys, so it doesn't matter. They don't have personality. Part of you feels bad. Well, they, you know. No. How do you know that maybe they're like children are gonna cry over them? Who knows? They murdered the Tuscans. Yeah. I don't feel bad. I wanted vengeance, and I got it, and I feel good about it. I was giggling with joy. Are no, you kidding me? It, it was great. It, it was great. It was literally, it was just like the most like cold blooded thing I've seen. <laughs> like, oh, and like Boba Fett is like not he, like, joyful, but you can tell he's like, it, 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 there, there's no smile on his face, but there's a he, smile like, in his a heart. Look. Yeah, uh, yeah. He gives a look over to Fennec Shan. She's like, mm-hmm. and then, then we get the weirdest sequence. We're still in the flashback, by the way. Like, and this is the problem with the episode is like, we're still in the flashback. Mm-hmm. And th- I think this is the final flashback, and that's why. But these episodes being split up into two chunks, it's tough. It's, yeah. 
they go to the Sarlacc pit because Boba Fett wants to get his armor out of the Sarlacc pit. Yeah, he thinks it's in there. <laughs> and the way he thinks he's going to do that is by shining a flashlight. Yeah. Shining a big <laughs> flashlight into the Sarlacc pit. And lowering the ship face first towards the Sarlacc pit, which... I'm not going to lie. That made it, all, all of that made zero sense to me. You have no reason to believe that that's where your armor is. Because you, you wore it out of the yeah. Sarlacc pit. Yeah, you got out of it. You got out of the pit with your armor. It's, I, maybe he doesn't remember how he got out. Like, maybe it's, like, all a blur for him. But, yeah, that was weird. But if they show us, like, we are under the impression that what they show us, he remembers, right? Because when he doesn't remember stuff, it's like a, like a melange no, of dust No, he remembers it later. Sand. We don't know. We don't know if he remembers it in that moment, though, or if he is, like, being in the Bacta tank is helping him regain his memories. I guess. But, like, how else would you, like, yeah. you your armor obviously got you out of the pit. I really don't know why. How else would you be the only person ever to? A flashlight. My problem be, yeah. My problem with the, the way it was shot was that it implied that Boba Fett forgot that the Sarlacc had a mouth, which yeah. to me says, and this is I'm this is about to get really crazy up in here, okay? This is about to get into some weird Mandela Bernstein Bernstein bear stuff. I think that there are two Boba Fetts. Okay? Follow me on this. There is the original Boba Fett and then there is the special editions Boba Fett. And orig we are watching original Boba Fett in this show. Because this Boba Fett does not know that the Sarlacc has a mouth. What? So the mouth of the Sarlacc that comes up and attacks them. Yeah. In the, in, this is such a dumb joke. That is only for like a small group of people. The, the mouth of the Sarlacc isn't in the original cut. Right? In the original oh. cut of Star Wars Return of the Jedi. There is no mouth. There is I just a seen it. the Sarlacc is essentially a hole in the ground. Oh, okay. George Lucas added the mouth of the Sarlacc in the special editions later. I see. And so the joke I'm making is that this Boba Fett, th there's no reason for Boba Fett to think that he can shine a light down the gullet of the mouth of the Sarlacc. Yeah. Unless he doesn't know that there's a mouth because he is from the original cut of the movie. It's a dumb joke, but I hope someone enjoyed it. I hope someone's on board with no, it. No, it was a great joke. It's just I've never seen the originals, so. We own them. We should watch them. On VHS? Them. On Blu-ray. What? Don't, that, I don't know that that's legal, but we do have the... Don't worry about it. We have the despecialized versions. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, we should watch those, because uh, that was a great joke, They're and really I, beautiful. I missed it. Um, no, that's so fine. That's so fine. So I, I <laughs> that was a very niche niche comment, but I, I, I just didn't understand where he thought his armor was going to be. Me neither. Right? Because he, he's... <laughs> I was confused why he was just shining his light down the opening of the Sarlacc. He can't have thought that that would work. Well, he did, because he got the ship real close. Also, he's complaining that there's no light after he blocked the light with his ship. And yeah. all of this is to get to the cool thing that happens. And this is my point about the show, right? Mm -hmm. Fennec Shan hitting the button. No, first of all, Fennec Shan dropping onto the uh, glass. Right, because the ship is like this. So that the mouth comes up at her. Awesome, mm -hmm. right? Everything after the decision to shine the flashlight is great because Fennec Shan drops down. And then the thing jumps up and hits the window while she's there. She's like, ah. And then she presses the button. And the sonic charge from Attack of the Clones comes out and mm -hmm. makes the noise that we all love, right? Because everybody loves that. Yeah. Yeah noise it's so cool yeah and then the, the ship pulls back and she sits down and Boba Fett's like don't touch my buttons all of it's funny it's cool yeah. it's great but to get to the funny cool great stuff they had to make the characters do something that didn't really make a lot of sense yeah and I feel like that's what a lot of this show has been for me yeah is characters doing weird or like out of character things mm -hmm. in order to get them to a point where we get something that like I'm like I freaking loved that yeah like black chrysanthemum gets to the fight sequence in boba fett's thing in the last episode because there's no security i guess like yeah. no one thinks to like watch boba fett while the tuts are there threatening his life with a bounty hunter like, yeah the, i don't get it honestly they they give up on that in order to get to the fight and i just wish that the like getting to the cool stuff was a little bit stronger because the cool stuff is so strong mm-hmm and it, it's it's giving the show, like, a, a flip-floppy vibe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, like, very, like, mixed on it. Because
because there are many things that I'm like, that's dope. Mm-hmm. And there's so many other things where I'm like, that's dumb. Like, <laughs> So then we uh, get to the final scene of the flashback, which is Fennec Shand and Boba Fett sitting around a campfire. Or no, no, no. Uh, does it happen in the ship? It's in the ship where he's yeah. like, I have some, she's like, he's like, where do you want me to drop you off? And she's like, oh, well, what are you going to do? He's like, I've got some scores to settle. She's like, I'm along for the ride, yeah. baby. Yeah. Hey, did you, did you, did you? Yeah, did, she's did, like, did, did. Eh, this could be fun. Yeah, because he has told her at this point that he wants to build his own family. Yeah. Uh, and by that, he means a gang fit. He wants to do the crime. Yeah. And she's like, oh, man. And he's like, I will give you what no customer will ever give you loyalty and she's like oh shit i've always been loyal to them but they've never been loyal to me you get rewards points that you can redeem every ten thousand gets you one dollar off your groceries customer loyalty something you don't get from honey birdette lingerie um yeah that video is coming up later uh stay tuned to clarissa's channel for that saga so boba fett wakes up and it, it seems like we are caught up, right? It seems like there's not going to be a lot more flashback because the flashbacks now have caught up to where we get in, where we meet Boba and Fennec in Mandalorian Season 2. Yeah. Spoilers for Mandalorian Season 2. If you've only watched Book of Boba Fett and not Mandalorian Season 2, you I would... wrong. <laughs> well, that, but I would also really recommend that you go back and watch Mandalorian Season 2 in order to understand the rest of Boba Fett because I yeah. don't know that when Mandalorian shows up next week, it's going to make a lot of sense. When, when, when Din Djarin shows up next week, or the week after, it's not going to make a lot of sense to people who haven't watched Mandalorian. You think he's showing up? They played his theme song. Oh, the yeah. end of this episode is Boba Fett going, I need to find some muscle. And then the Mandalorian theme song starts playing. I uh, honestly could not like recognize the Mandalorian theme song if you played it for me. What? It's yeah, I don't find ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. It's so cool. And it doesn't, ba, ba, uh, ba, 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 ba. doesn't stick for me. I it's, don't know. I, okay. Yeah. I, All right. Yeah. Subjective opinions about art are healthy in a marriage. Um. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, Boba Fett holds a dinner, has a little dinner party. Oh no, no, no! First, we have to first we have to go meet Black Crescenton again. Oh, does that happen first? Yeah, because Black Crescenton oh, is he's at the there. dinner. Yeah. No, you're right. You're so right. So we go to mm-hmm. um, Madame Garza's casino. Yeah. And and she <laughs> is dressed like like. It's unbelievable. She, yeah. She, I've never, I, uh, yeah, I, she's the most attractive Twi'lek I've ever seen in my life. And that's a, the, a really high bar. It's a high bar. A There's high a bar. lot of great looking Twi'leks, but like yeah. that dress on her with the white headpiece, the, I was oh like, God, God yeah. damn, mm-hmm. Madame That Garza. was beautiful. That was, I, I, I had the full on, do you remember the, the TikTok trend where it was like, mommy, yeah, mom, yeah. mom, mom, mommy. I was like, mom, me, 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 Should- me, me, me. Should make that. I should make that. Mm-hmm. I uh, yeah. She she was given. She just has such big eyes. And her face is so sp- like she's yeah she's beautiful. Her face is expressive mm-hmm. and, and that dress man. They yeah they know how to like make her look incredible. So yeah, Black Crescenton's there getting drunk in the casino. And, <laughs> he looks um, like such a sad little he's boy. He's such a sad boy. <laughs> and so there's some people that are like winning money at the casino, and he mm-hmm. gets all salty about it because he's like, no one can be happy if I'm not happy. Um, and just uh, attacks these people for... These poor Trandoshans. Literally they no do reason. not deserve it. Yeah. They really don't deserve it. They did literally nothing wrong, and he's like, ugh, screw these people. Well, and what's weird about it is that Boba Fett, so right before this, the, the scene where Boba Fett leaves is he's like, I'm going to go out and, like, show my face to keep the peace. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't want, like, things to break out. And so I thought Boba Fett was going to step in and keep the peace. But he didn't but do that. Boba Fett very much lets... Black Chrysanthemum rip off that Trandoshan's arm for no reason. Yeah. Like, the the, the Trandoshan, I mean, I guess the Trandoshan hit Chrysanthemum with a bottle, but, like... Which was, if, if that's if, like, I were to do that to you. Yeah. Like, and all, it, it, it it's just weird to see Black Chrysanthemum be so strong in this moment when mm-hmm. last week he, like, couldn't hurt anybody. Yeah. And I was like, where, what, why didn't, like, they should have let Black Chrysanthemum last week rip off Drash's arm. Yeah. Seriously, it's a robotic arm. Yeah. She can just put it back on. It wouldn't be bloody, right? Like, yeah. I feel like they could have pulled that off mm-hmm. and made that really cool. Mm-hmm. Whereas, they, like, you know, no one got hurt last week. Yeah. Whereas this week, we finally see Black Crescenton actually, like, 
do some damage. Yeah. After Madame Garza gives the most epic middle school principal speech I've ever She's heard. She's like, you, you, what do you have to prove? You, you know, you were the best warrior in the gladiator pits or something yeah like and, and he was and yeah 100 percent. you know she's like flattering but also like firm you put him down i'll take care of your tab don't worry about it yeah and he like thinks about it and he's like you know what no i would rather rip this guy's arm off and she turns around she's like oh my god she's like i'm just i'm done i'm over it like but, uh, I, I do which is the most customer service thing i've ever seen it was perfect Oh, a thousand percent. And also, like, what is she going to do? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, start a fight with him with no. her guards? Like, she no. She tried. She's it's like... It's Black Crescentin. You you kind of have to deal with it. Yeah. Which is why Masespa needs a, a daimyo yeah. that has a little bit more respect than Boba Fett has right now. Yeah. Don't worry, though. We got a few more episodes of Boba Fett's going to get some respect. Uh, that will, that I do know to be true. Um, But Boba Fett just watches all of this. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's just, just standing seems there. pleased. Yeah, he's like, cool. It's like, this is fun. Well done. Good and form. Good form. The people, uh, there there are a lot of people online who are like, Boba Fett is like, why is he so soft? Like, why is he weak? I think that a, a softer Boba Fett would have stepped in and been like, hey, stop. If if, if they were yeah. trying to make Boba Fett like a, a good guy, mm-hmm. Boba Fett would have like helped. But instead, Boba Fett is like, cool. Well, fuck that Trendosian. I'm going to go ask him to be on my team. You know what? Yeah. That was that that was pretty cool. That was cool. Well I think done. I want, I think I actually, I let him go earlier. I think that was a mistake. I think I need to offer him a job. And yeah. <laughs> he's like, he just says, bye to Metal Garza. And then goes immediately to be like, hey, uh, you look, you look like you're not busy. Yeah. Yeah. Come work for, yeah. It, it was, it was wild. So I, he, I'm disappointed uh-huh. because I wanted Boba Fett v. Kersantan for real, right? Me and we're too. never going to get that fight now because Kersantan is in the tribe and the, the the problem with it is that the only physical threat to Boba Fett that they've set up on the show mm-hmm. isn't a threat anymore. Yeah. And I'm a little disappointed because the, the Pikes don't offer that, right? So they're going to have to introduce another bounty hunter later in the series to be the, like, one, 1v1 fight that Boba Fett gets. Mm-hmm. And I just think they should have already introduced the 1v1 character so that it has payoff at the end. Yeah. But they've taken away the payoff by making the character that we all wanted to see Boba Fett fight in the big finale mm-hmm. and make him Boba Fett's ally. And maybe he turns on Boba Fett. Maybe he betrays him. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. But the, I was a little bit like, oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're doing. Yeah. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. I'm kind of like, eh. But then, uh, we get the dinner. then we get the dinner party. You mm-hmm. know, Boba Fett throws a, a little know, soiree. Hosts a little party. Um, on top of the Rancor cage. Yeah. Like, he, they're all sitting there, and he's like, so, uh, we're gonna, he's like, basically, like, um, I'm gonna be the boss here, and you go be the boss over there, and everybody's happy. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy it. No. I think it's temporary. I think that Boba Fett doesn't, I, I think that Boba Fett, because while I was watching it, I was like, why would Boba Fett let them have their territory? Like, this seems weird. Yeah. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, he can't fight a war on all fronts. No, no, no. He no. will take care of them later. Yeah. But he needs them to stay out of his way until the pikes are dealt with. And yeah, and he just says, he says, like, you you stay neutral. Mm-hmm. I just don't join the pikes, and then I won't have to come after you. But, like, he's like, just stay neutral. Well, and one of the complaints about the early episodes of the show from certain people was that... Boba Fett wasn't like, they were like, why doesn't he just go around and kick ass? And there was a part of me that was like, yeah, I, I, you almost want him to fight more, right? But then I was thinking about it and watching the, the Rancor moment when the Rancor sticks its claw through the gate. And I was like, oh, he couldn't. He wasn't strong enough. Mm-hmm. And like, he didn't have the numbers. And he is fighting a war. Mm-hmm. And yes, the bo- the bounty hunter Boba Fett would go kick ass. Mm-hmm. And then he would flee and he'd go hide because there'd be a bounty on his head, right? Exactly. Boba Fett doesn't want to do that anymore, and mm-hmm. so he has to uh, he, he has, has to, to get his army going first. Uh-huh. And now that he has a Rancor, and he has a Wookiee, and he has a street gang, and he has a um, assassin in Fennec Shand. Yeah. Now that he has all those pieces, now he brings everyone together, and they're like, "Why should we trust you?" Rancor moment. He is. We are being shown that Boba Fett is so smart. We're just not. We're just getting the puzzle pieces a little bit slower than I think some people wanted. Mm -hmm. But the puzzle pieces are all fitting together. And I think that in next episode or the week after, we're going to see the collective front of what Boba Fett has amassed. Mm -hmm. And I think that it is going to retroactively improve how some of the past episodes have looked. Uh, 
like, yeah, some things. Definitely not everything. Definitely not everything. Like this, the, unfortunately, Boba Fett right now is not really holding a candle to the Mandalorian, which is unfortunate. Um, I agree with that. But, uh, yeah. yeah, this episode was definitely better than last week's, at 100%. least. At least. And I, I think we're done with the flashbacks. Oh. Yeah, we do get the final scene. Um, Fennec and or uh, the, the 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 people all agree to stay neutral, to not get involved in the fight, mm-hmm. to just let Boba Fett fight it with his team alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, those poor Pikes. They I, and like I don't usually say that about the Pikes because they're pretty evil. But, like they don't. They think that they're fighting like a bounty hunter, and they don't know what's coming. Boba Fett's got them brains. Um, Fennec and uh, Boba have a little balcony scene. Mm-hmm. Very uh, wherefore art thou, Romeo, and. They're like, war is coming. And Fennec's like, yeah, you're going to need muscle. But uh, how much money you got? Yeah, and Boba Fett's like, I'm rich. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, he has a treasury now. I don't know how he was rich earlier in the episode, like in the flashback part, but it makes sense he's rich now. He just he just keeps money on him. Uh, and then he goes, uh, or uh, Fennec Chan is like, muscle's easy to uh, buy. Yeah. And then the Mandalorian theme plays. And Din Djarin, baby. We, it, it was like announced, I think it was announced or the rumored that he was going to be in the show. Yeah. And I'm not surprised, right? Boba Fett was in his show. You got to do the crossover. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to give back. Uh, and so I think that I'm, I'm super excited to see him in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how do you think Din Djarin fits into all of this uh, moving forward? I don't think he's going to have, like, a huge part to play. I think he's just going to mm-hmm. be there for, like, the final battle. And kick some ass and maybe save Boba Fett's life. Do you think that Din Djarin's presence is going to explain what's going on with Grogu and Din? No. No, they're not going to. No, not in this. You don't think so? No. I feel like they're going to have to bring it up Bring it up something. No. that's mm-hmm. they, they That needs to be in The Mandalorian. That can't be in Boba Fett. Oh, no. I'm not saying answers. I'm saying, like, they're going to have to put in something about, like, what is up with Din without Grogu. Like, I feel like they, they, he can't just show oh, up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, he can't just show up and just be like, all good. You know what I mean? He has to kind of show up and be like, I, I, they have to say something about where he's at. Because where we, le- where we leave off with the Mandalorian is that he has the Darksaber. Uh-huh. He is ostensibly the leader of Mandalore. Uh-huh. And Boba Tan is pissed about it. But it is Boba Fett happening after that? They could be happening kind of around the same time. We don't actually know. He may not. Have, if he shows up, he might not have like lost. If he Grogu shows yet. up, then it has to be after. Okay. Because the because Boba Fett shows up. Because there's no time after Grogu gets kidnapped, right? In that episode, it's like a pretty straight shot to the end of the season. I guess. So there's not really time for. It's been a while since I've watched it now, so I can't really remember. Unless, wait, wait, wait. So, Boba Fett gets his armor back in, like, episode two, right? Then he, then Boba Fett shows back up. So, this could all be between, so all this whole, all of the present stuff would have to have happened between the, Boba Fett getting his armor back and when Boba Fett shows up because Grogu has been kidnapped? Yeah, I, right now the timeline makes zero sense to me. <laughs> I, it, That's an inter- that is interesting. I, I don't know. I, yeah. No, but it would work, right? Yeah, and then they don't Boba have Fett to... seems like at his full power in that episode um, when he's fighting the Stormtroopers. Mm-hmm. So it would totally work that this... <sighs> is the in-between. But how do you explain that next week? I don't know. And I think they're going to have... I think they've created a really big problem for themselves. How so? Like, when does this happen? Well, what I might be wrong timeline? about the five years. No, but, like, I, I know that that is, like, a, like, popular belief. Right? Like, it's not, like, I don't know. This is, like, the, the timeline of all of this, I think, is, like, really complicated. And I think they might have, like, screwed themselves over by making it that way. I almost feel like they should have just given them a little bit... Yeah, The Mandalorian takes place five years after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I don't understand how it can. I don't, or I understand how that one can. I don't understand how Boba Fett can be five years. Yeah. Right? Like, that's weird. It is weird. It makes it weird. Mm -hmm. Because where was he that whole time? 
Was he like in stasis in his armor in the Sarlacc for years? Like no. that seems absurd, right? No, there is there there is absolutely no way. Like you no, <laughs> you would die. Yeah, because there's too many holes in it. His armor is like chunks, right? It's not like skin tight. It's or not airtight. like a yeah. It's not like a spacesuit. And the only part of his armor that would survive is the best car. The rest of it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I don't know how I I the. the the five years of this all was really distracting watching this episode. I'm not going to lie. Because I was like, wait a second. You guys are writing this. <laughs> yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like an unintentional error. Like, it's one of those things where, like, you didn't have to. Didn't and maybe really it think isn't, about right? It. Maybe, it like... maybe there's something we don't understand. Maybe. But. It, the... I would like to know, though. <laughs> I, I would, too. Yeah. Yeah, because... so I don't know. The, the problem with Disney canon is that they came out and they said it's all canon. It all connects. It's all right. Uh-huh. It all fits together. And uh-huh. when you say that. Then it then I'm creates... sitting here trying to figure out how it all fits together. Yeah, and it's fun. When it does work, when the pieces do fit together, it is it it is a better it, experience for the audience, in my 100%, opinion. 100%, yeah. I like the interconnected canon of it all. I really, really do. I like when stuff from the books fits into stuff from the movies and vice versa and all yeah. of that stuff. Me too. But now this five years question is like, was he a Tuscan Raider for five years? That seems weird. That does seem weird. That seems like real, that seems like a long time. Yeah, like they didn't accomplish a lot in five years. So I'm sorry, but like. They took out one train though, right? But like, that's the thing. Like, it do, there, there aren't, there isn't enough plot with the Tuscan Raiders for, to, for him to have been there for Well, but that's what I mean. If, if he's going to be there for five years, that has to be at least its own season. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. like, it, right now, nothing, I'm, I'm frustrated. Honestly, I'm frustrated with the show. Mm-hmm. It's not adding up, and I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like it. I, I, I understand where you're at. I think I definitely enjoy it more than you do. Yeah. Um, I think that I, I enjoy the things, but, like, even, like, the Sarlacc thing, like, I enjoyed my dumb joke about it more than I enjoyed how it actually went down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I enjoyed being like, oh, yeah, Boba Fett doesn't know it has a mouth because he's not from the special editions. Like, that's... Yeah. It's just weird. Mm-hmm. The five-year question is going to be a real question. Yeah. Because they're just going to say, oh, he was with the Tuscans for five years. And then I'm like, really? was he? Was he? How was he not more sunburned? If he was with them for five years with no helmet, how is he not more sunburned? Yeah. And also, like... Maybe I, sunburns yeah. don't exist in space. Maybe the black melons make you immune to vitamin D. Immune to vitamin D. Yeah. You heard it here, folks, at the Nerdy Nightly. Black melons make you immune to vitamin D. All right, that's everything that happens in the episode. I yeah. I liked this one um, more than last week. I, I had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was I like the I like the chef droid. The that was General yeah. Grievous's cousin. I I quite enjoyed him. There were fun moments in it. I yeah. didn't love it. Um, you know, we're gonna finish out the season, but like. Yeah, I don't know. They've kind of lost me a little bit, which is too bad. I'm more excited for next week now that we're done with the flashbacks. Like, honestly, I think the rest of the season has so much more potential than the last bit because the last bit has there it has been clunky. It's been clunky. Mm-hmm. The, the separation between the flashbacks and the present has been clunky. The um, time spent... And when in the episode that is, the arc of the episodes has felt pretty, con- even in episode two, which I think is the best episode of the show, my complaint about that episode was that the separation of the episode into what scenes go where, just it, it's it's overburdened by the flashbacks mm-hmm. and the fact that the flashbacks are more interesting than the present. Um, and so I, I'm hopeful that now that the flashbacks are done and that we're caught up with the show, regardless of how many years take place between this and that. I hope that the show from here on out can just kind of be its own thing and not feel like it has to do six different things in every episode. Yeah. And hopefully, hopefully we get that next week. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't, totally understandable. Hit the dislike button. Leave me in comments down below. The algorithm got us hungry. We must feed her. As always, you can follow us around the internet. I'm at Nerdy Nightly. I'm at Clarice Dracaris. And you should do something nerdy tonight, friends. <laughs> Bye.